Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five cleansers that are fantastic to use if you're using retinol or prescription retinoic acid, tretinoin, adapalene, any form of topical vitamin A. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you are a skincare enthusiast, I think you would enjoy it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. Topical vitamin A can either be retinol, retinaldehyde, prescription, retinoic acid, aka tretinoin or retin-A, tazeratine, aka tazerac, uh, or it can be adapalene, aka differin. And these, all these forms of vitamin A, topical vitamin A, they can really benefit the skin in terms of improving skin cell turnover, they can help with hyperpigmentation, they can reduce oiliness, impart acne control, boost up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines. But because they do facilitate skin cell turnover, one issue that you will likely encounter when starting a form of topical vitamin A, regardless of the form, is a lot of dryness and irritation. This can actually be unbearable depending on your background skin type and the form that you're using. A key to success with using topical retinol or retinoic acid uh, is paying attention to your cleansing routine. If you are somebody who loves to scrub your face uh, likes to use really hot water, or maybe you're using a very harsh cleanser, what's going to happen is you're going to be stripping away your lipid barrier with these cleansing habits. And as a result, that's gonna make you more likely to have severe dryness, irritation, and peeling. That can go on and on and on. And if you have acne, as I have talked about in other videos, your acne can get a little worse in the beginning when starting a form of topical vitamin A, although that doesn't happen for everyone. But if you are someone who is, you know, has one of these more, you know, intense, if you will, uh, cleansing practices, that can actually make it more likely that you will have purging that goes on a little bit longer than you might like and is more inflammatory, meaning more redness, more inflamed looking, uh, and, and more obvious. These cleansers I'm gonna recommend to you guys, they're gentle cleansers. And what I mean by that is they're non-soap cleansers that don't have harsh surfactants in them, uh, like uh, certain sulfates and cleansers can actually be very stripping. Uh, they're good if you have, at baseline they're good if you have really oily skin for stripping away some of that excess oil. But when you're embarking on the retinol journey and going through it, you don't need that. It, it can only make things you know, more aggravating for you. Um, and importantly, these products, they don't have any unnecessary ingredients. Uh, certain products, certain cleansers, they might have fragrance or menthol to impart a tingling sensation. That's something that should be avoided. Menthol and actually certain fragrance ingredients, they can cause the little blood vessels in your skin to dilate and lead to redness. And while that's very unlikely in a cleanser that you're rinsing off, you know, why stir the pot? You want success, especially if you are paying out of pocket for uh, prescription retinoic acid. It's not cheap. And as a matter of fact, a lot of, uh, a lot of retinols that you can buy in the store are not cheap. So you wanna make it work for you, not against you. All right, these are in no particular order, but one cleanser I always recommend to people who are starting retinol or any form of topical vitamin A is the La Roche-Posay Tellurian uh, Hydrating Gentle Facial Cleanser. This is a cream formulation and it's very good at baseline if you have dry or mature and or mature skin. Uh, it doesn't have harsh surfactants in it. It has ceramides in it, which may help in a cleanser form to help with adding, you know, improving the barrier function of your skin. Um, and it also has niacinamide, which has anti-inflammatory properties, meaning it can re reduce redness, and it supports uh, skin barrier restoration and repair. So this is a great one to use. The second one is the CeraVe Hydrating facial cleanser. This one is great. You guys know I'm a huge fan of CeraVe. They have so many fantastic products. This facial cleanser is very, very mild and it's, it's uh, you know, doesn't have any surfactants in it that's going to strip away the lipid barrier. It has a very, very mild cleansing surfactant called Betrimonium Methosulfate. Uh, very, very gentle. 
and this is not going to unlikely to disrupt the acid mantle to the extent that's going to put you at risk for dryness and irritation. The third one I love is by Avan. It's their Xericom AD Lipid Replenishing Cleansing Oil. This has um, actually a compound called L-Modulia, which is derived from some of the uh, therm uh, thermophilic uh, bacteria in thermal spring water, and it's thought to impart benefit to the skin microbiome. So you have that, you know, part of helping your skin perform for you in terms of dealing with the irritation is making sure that the skin barrier is healthy. And a big part of that has to do with your skin microbiome. And one thing that can happen with cleansing is you kind of can disrupt that local cutaneous microbiome. And then the fourth one is the First Aid Beauty Pure Skin Face Cleanser. I have recommended this in so many videos. Uh, it's a favorite of mine. Super gentle. It's got licorice root in it, which is anti-inflammatory, can help calm down redness. It also has glycerin, which is very hydrating. And it has, a, again, a very mild surfactant, sodium cochleal isothionate. Then the fifth and final uh, cleanser, which is really wonderful, uh, is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gentle Cleansing Lotion. This product has polyoxymers in it, which actually can kind of help in cushioning the skin cell membranes to reduce that irritation. Super gentle, very, very short ingredient list. All right, those are my five cleansers that I recommend to people starting any form of topical vitamin A. There are many others out there, but I thought five was a nice number to keep it simple for you guys. Um, however, you may find, those of you who wear, cosmetic, wear a lot of makeup, you may find that it's a little frustrating using these cleansers to take off your makeup. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to be very efficient. You may find that you have to rub a lot in order to get your makeup off and then it just doesn't all come off. So a makeup remover will be helpful. When you wash your face, make sure that you use lukewarm water and that you don't scrub your face. Hot, hot water can you know, make you lose more water out of your skin. It, it's very irritating and will dry out your skin at baseline. So before even starting the retinol, actually start washing your face at a lukewarm temperature if you're not already. And most people are washing their face in hot water. So go ahead and change over to lukewarm at least a few weeks in advance of starting the retinol. That will really help set you up for success. And then, you know, don't scrub with like a facial brush or a spin brush. Uh, because that's going to, you know, further kind of strip away at that lipid barrier and make you a lot more sensitive to the irritating side effects of retinol. Just use your finger pads in gentle circular fashion and, uh, you know, that's, that's a much better approach to, to reducing irritation to the skin. As a general point though, you will find that surfactants that foam, they tend to be more drying and irritating to the skin barrier. So you'll notice I'm not recommending any foaming cleansers in this video. I use foaming cleansers personally, but I've been using uh, retinoic acid for a long time now. And so my skin has built up tolerance to that irritation and I'm fine to use any cleanser. It doesn't bother me. The irritation that you experience with topical vitamin A, it shouldn't be forever. Uh, your skin will eventually get over that retinization process and you may you know, be able to go back to a foaming cleanser, which tends to be a little bit harsher, especially if you have an oily skin type, you may find that you, know, you wanna go back to that. But I would say at least in the beginning, uh, you know, two to three weeks before starting and then for the first uh, six weeks or so of using a topical vitamin A, stick to one of these really, really mild cleansers and don't overdo it with the cleansing. And you know, then moving on forward, you may, you may try and reintroduce your foaming cleanser that you once used if your skin can tolerate it. Um, but again, remember the uh, topical vitamin A is gonna reduce the oiliness in your skin. So you may find that your skin biology is just such after you know going on topical vitamin A that you no longer need those foaming cleansers to really get off that excess oil if you're somebody with an oilier skin type. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And as a reminder, another key aspect of 
success with topical retinol or any form of vitamin A is moisturizing. I have a video which I will put as a end card here uh, at the end of the video of the best moisturizers to use while starting topical vitamin A. So check that video out next uh, if you if you are at all interested in that. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.